while these same young people who want to vote for something and are not only weighing what the fuck they're voting against or what they're tired of or what they're sick of or what they're, they want something to vote for. And Joe Biden gives them nothing. And what's even worse than what Joe Biden gives them is what the Democratic Party has given them, with is, which is dust, which is literally no one running against Joe Biden. That even is a glimmer of hope or satisfaction or assurance that anything that they care about can proactively and progressively be done. People, these same young people are tired of participating in a political system where they always have to vote for a lesser of two evils. think any and the reason why is that i don't think the indictments are about to like encourage or embolden trumpism or get more you know people who feel like there's a witch hunt all along i don't think that's about to get them to show up to the polls anymore but it's not about to deter them from the polls and they showed up in hella numbers you know what i'm saying to vote for before we learned in 2016 you can't sleep on them right you really can't undermine the the, the number and the swaths of trump enthusiast or at least tangential Trump supporters that is willing to pull up and do the work to at least go cast a ballot for that man. So in terms of insurrection, nah, I don't think it's going to create more new votes and, and create more turnout, but I for damn sure don't think it's about to create less turnout. I don't think they was turned off about that shit. I think they're ready to run it back. Yeah, I, I yeah, I disagree wholeheartedly. I think yeah. like I, I think what what the part that we miss is that the, the key aspect of any election is independence and moderates. The people in the middle. The people that's willing to be swayed either way. And what we ignore is that the reason why they were swayed in 2016 was because th there was this there was this this unknown associated with Donald Trump. He's not going to get the same love he got in 2016 from the, from moderates and independents and undecideds because they know what they got with him. You can no longer say, well, he's not. Well, let's, let's get somebody that's not a politician and see how they do. We saw we saw an increase in the we saw an increase in the budget. We saw him ha handle COVID terribly. We saw the economy struggle. We saw tax breaks that solely benefited corporations. I mean, we didn't get the we didn't get a, a wall. The companies that Donald Trump said that he would bring back to the United States with their jobs day one didn't happen. So now he has a record that that's attached to him. So so taking his record and then say, look, these are all the illegal shit that he's done independents and moderates are going to sit back and be like there's literally nothing for me to lean on like yeah am i do i not like joe biden no nah, i don't like joe biden do i do i think he was perfect i'm like nah i, I may not but i but as a as a moderate voter as an independent voter as somebody who's going to cast a ballot i'm definitely not going to cast a ballot for something as, as the polls are showing like that bump that you see with uh, with conservatives you don't see that nationwide you don't see your popularity growing from that. If anything, you see more people that's willing to be like it, like it, in terms of respecting the, the the office of the presidency, a nigga that's that's currently under multiple indictments, that's currently being sued for two hundred and fifty million dollars, that's that's already been found liable of defamation and sexual assault. The idea that that's not gonna have any impact on voter turnout literally says, all right, cool. I'm gonna ignore everything I seen in 2022. I'm gonna ignore everything I seen in 2020, and I'm gonna sit back and say. But here's there's the a thing. possibility that Trump has that same that that is the case that they're willing to ignore because if nothing sticking to him listen this is all we need for independents and moderates if nothing sticks to him if none of these charges stick to them and do the final death knell of dissuading them that he's a reasonable person all it takes is one of his cornerstone issues for him to buy that he's willing to go all in on everything American or go all in on the class the, the the issues with class or the issues with like how money moves or the economy or whatever for them to lean into how how why not because we can because we can look at his tax plan and see no, that it hurt poor plan. people we can look at his impact on the economy and see that it hurt poor that's people that's what i'm we can saying if any of these independents or moderates are not poor people and the charges don't stick they're going to be willing to be forgiving and bypass a lot of these charges and indictments and shit like that that really didn't matter a whole lot it was a whole lot to do about nothing and protect the issues that they care the most about if they really want to live in a more uh, socially conservative america and he is able to jump through the hoops and hurdles to kind of get to the finish line to get into the ballot box. They're going to vote for him because he aligns with the principles that they have. They have aligned. Democrats don't have clearly demarcated principles about what they want and what their aspirations are outside of like shit like climate change. And I guess like giving people 
smiley face lives to live in terms of the economy. But that shit is not real because they rely on economy numbers like job improvement and shit like that to reflect benefits of the economy and not the bottom line of the economy. So they won't feel good shit when it comes to the economy, but not like the bottom line solutions to these problems that's changing people's every day. No, the Republicans are not going to deliver that. But these moderates that you're talking about probably aren't a part of the lower class. Right. And I mean, or at least that they have issues. They have class based issues that are allowing will allow for them to look past a lot of the issues that Donald Trump has created. That's my argument. Yeah. I I mean, and I, I think, I think that's more of a, I, I think that's, I think that's a big assumption. A I think that's a big Joe assumption. Biden, America, they have a lot what, of reasons what, what, what to vote. They have a lot of reasons for? to vote for Joe Biden. What are they, they voting a, for with Joe Biden besides staying away from Donald Trump? And it, if they're th- not that, afraid was, of the boogeyman of Donald Trump, but if, but if they're not afraid of the boogeyman of Donald Trump, then what is it that but is they, in, enticing about voting for Joe Biden? Because they are afraid of the boogeyman Donald Trump. Because conservatives have already shown a failure to, to put forth somebody. Like I said, I felt like Ron DeSantis, if he would have been able to maintain his campaign in, in, in a more viable fashion and not campaign like a Florida fucking politician, then he would have had a much better chance. But Donald Trump in and of itself, enough people was willing to say, I'm willing to go with Joe Biden old ass over Donald Trump because Donald Trump, we know we don't want that, right? That's not somebody we really know what we, we really know rock with. And so the, the, to think that all of a sudden now people will be much more forgiving of Donald Trump after the fact is ridiculous, especially when we now have a new class of voters. It's a lot more young voters that's willing to come out and say, I like a, a lot of the shit that's going on, and, and we're gonna talk more about. Uh, you about to rely on youth voter turnout for these elections? Yeah. These young people is not listen, boy. Man, young yeah, people, yes. Who you relying on to show up? Yeah, and vote right. for Joe Biden. You relying on old young people Toy, to show up? Yes, because in, because they did it in twenty twenty two. They did it in twenty twenty two. Experienced before they experienced the Joe Biden election by young people. You were talking about Gen Z, and you were yes. talking about. Look, can I finish? You're talking about Gen Z and you're talking about millennials. Millennials got no help with student loans. Millennials are out here suffering the most because they don't get any of the Go like, ahead. Yep. economic benefits of the society, society that's been created before them. Why? So social security is about to be what? Why? You said who why? works against yes, who works against who who's been working against student loans? When we talk about voter turnout, what makes voter turnout increase when you have different sects and different groups of of, of voters that come together to say, we may not be in love with this candidate here, but we are willing to make sure that this candidate don't do what he do. That's why 2022 was a referendum on Donald Trump. And and it showed that people are willing to go. We just have record numbers in a midterm. We just have record numbers in a midterm. And a part of what got us them record numbers is... The youth vote. We had the first Gen Zer be elected to be elected to the House from this the 2022 midterms. You got niggas like the Justins, the Justins in Tennessee. These are millennials, right? Who who, who are becoming? To, you, you still haven't convinced me. Okay. Because listen, people are sick of voting to stay away from shit. They want to vote for things. And I said at the beginning of this conversation, this was going. And I'm, maybe I didn't get it out, but what I meant to tell you. And tell y'all in Chop Up Land is that Damo is going to like jump over very important shit and not respond to it or engage with it for the sake of making his top level argument. So my question that I'm posing to you and that you're not dealing with, and I want to go to the comments too, to go to the chat and see what they're talking about, but is that you still have not provided an incentive, a captivating reason, a logical reason why these same young people who want to vote for something and are not only weighing what the fuck they're voting against or what they're tired of or what they're sick of or what they're, they want something to vote for. And Joe Biden gives them nothing. And what's even worse than what Joe Biden gives them is what the Democratic Party has given them, with is, which is dust, which is literally no one running against Joe Biden. That even is a glimmer of hope or satisfaction or assurance that anything that they care about can proactively and progressively be done. People, these same young people are tired of participating in a political system where they always have to vote for a lesser of two evil and so knowing that that's always going to be the the calculation because we live in america they at least want to be able to vote for somebody who's going to do something this is how joe biden got in student loans student loans and then what we find out he can't do shit about the student loans my shit started in october i think my payment is due on october 7th then he hollered about that ain't true though that ain't true 
Yeah, that ain't true. He was able true. to do something about student <laughs> loans. The, 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 but oh, hold on. Oh, actually, oh, what? Toya. See, and, and, and this is no, 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 no. This is and this is the reason. This is the reason. Because oh, people, but, uh, listen. I just want to finish my point. You have not explained how young people are going to want to vote for Joe for Joe Biden. I just sure. I don't understand that logic. Sure. I'll stay so, home. So like, so this is the thing. This say. is the this is the logic that made Donald Trump's presidency possible. Sure. I think there I think there are more people that are that also recognize that that's willing because again like I said this isn't about ideology it's about pragmatism and ideologically I understand where Toya is aligning herself but you can't be so ideological that you allow a worst case scenario just because you don't like the alternative. We cannot sit back and say, well because there are these things that we don't like about Joe Biden. I mean and because like even still Joe Biden did like he actually did what he said he was going to do. It wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a lot. We wanted more. Right. We wanted a lot of shit is completely forgiven. Most of it. You feel me? But he did that. What happened? I mean, we're going to talk more about his record. But the, the, the problem wasn't whether or not Joe Biden did it. It was whether or not conservatives allowed it to happen. And, and that's why we are more willing to say right now that we are willing to go against these like like conservatives. Right. We're willing to go against conservatives right now because what we see, they what their future is for us tomorrow. Joe Biden's ain't the best, but the alternative is worse. Now, speaking of the next part of this conversation is uh, Joe Biden's impeachment inquiry and the many investigations that's been going on against him. Now, what we know is his uh, impeachments are historically rare. Complicating larger conclusions about their political fallout, though observers have argued, as in the case of Bill Clinton, that they can wound a politician or wound a politician's character in the eyes of the public. In modern terms, only two previous presidents have actually been charged by the House of Representatives and none have been convicted in the Senate. But political experts who spoke for this story said such cases do appear to leave an impression on voters. In 1998, House Republicans launched an impeachment probe into then-President Clinton revolving around sexual relationship with Monica Lewinsky and a separate sexual harassment lawsuit filed by Paula Jones. In between, the 1998 midterm election saw Clinton's Democratic Party gain seats in the House without losing seats in the Senate. House Speaker Newt Gingrich, an architect of conservatives, returned to power in Congress earlier in the decade, quickly resign so what we're saying here is if you look at it from a historical perspective impeachment inquiries have had a positive impact on a president like what happened with bill clinton when the inquiry is seen as frivolous by the eyes of the people so i'm gonna ask you toya will this impeachment inquiry help voter turnout hurt voter turnout or will it not have any impact on turnout at all no impact i don't think anybody is no impact. or has sorry that I'm mockable in this bitch, <laughs> but I don't feel like the whole from the Hunter Biden expose to these indictments to is cracking the White House to whatever. I don't think anybody is really kind of feeding into in a material way any of the fantastical types of things that have kind of popped up about Joe Biden. I don't think anything besides his ability to be responsive to what's happening in the economy and what's going on with Donald Trump do people care about. And so I think all of this is a lot to do about nothing. And a waste of time. And I think a lot of people feel like it is too, but we talk about it because we have to, because it's the president. So yeah, no, not changing nothing. All right. Yeah. This is, again, this is what I got to say. I think this, this, this helps voter turnout. This helps voter turnout for Joe Biden, because this is where I will argue. This is what helps offset the conversation of Biden's age, because what happens is if, if you've been paying attention to mm. the, the, the many, congressional hearings that's been going on, whether it's about Hunter Biden, Burisma, Ukraine, Biden's peddling influence that like reps like James Comer and and, and, and McCarthy have been trying to push. And they've come up with nothing. And the reason why most people ain't like ain't really tripping off this is because committee hearings usually don't get prime time TV. Right. I think the, the January 6th hearings did 
But I think like committee hearings like this about like the weaponization of the FBI, these types of hearings, which have been hilarious, by the way, they've produced nothing of, of, of value for Republicans or you would hear them talking about it constantly. You don't hear them talking about the hearings that they did earlier in the year because they got nothing that they can get with it. Even James Comer, when asked whether or not he thinks these inquiries and these investigations will actually implicate Joe Biden in, in, in anything that's impeachable, his response is, we hope so. They don't have nothing. So why <laughs> for real? So why I think, <laughs> So why I think that this will help this will increase voter turnout like it did for Bill Clinton? Because it's like, yo, folks was like, okay, Bill Clinton is out of pocket for what he did with Monica Lewinsky and, and the other in the other uh woman. But I mean, to kick him out of office for that, y'all, for real. Like that was like that's how voters treated that that impeachment. Uh, Donald Trump impeachment it was so much clear evidence that everybody was like the only reason Donald Trump didn't go to jail is because he was president he ran the Justice Department and conservatives had control of the Senate that's it not because the evidence cleared him up there was a very convincing case for locking but when the when the main argument for why Donald Trump didn't go to jail was we can't indict a sitting president not oh he didn't do it but even if he did, we couldn't indict him. He is sitting president. That means that, okay, there was a case to indict your ass. When Republicans attempt to push this inquiry, prom time TV, this is an impeachment inquiry. This isn't like just these committee hearings. Every news channel is going to be tuned in to this, these conversations. And when LeBron. the people see, hold on, when the people see that these niggas have no case, their impotence, their incompetence, is going to drive drive voters to be like it's no way in hell 